Hi, I'm Jane and in this video I am going to teach you step by step exactly how to create your very first simple drum track. I'm going to use Reaper. You can download that and use it for 60 days to evaluate it so you can certainly work through this tutorial and then it's very cost effective to buy if you find it's a good piece of software for you. At the end of the video I'm going to link you to some extra resources because once you've got your first track in place you're going to want to progress. So let's head over to my screen and see exactly how you do it. Step one, start with an empty project. Step two, make sure that you can see the virtual keyboard. View, virtual MIDI keyboard. Make sure that C2 is in the middle. You can use your arrow keys to scroll up and down the octaves. The reason we want C2 in the middle is because we're going to start with a kick drum, which is on letter M on your keyboard, or B1 if you're looking at a MIDI keyboard, or note number 35. Make sure that the MIDI keyboard is transmitting on channel 10. This is very important. This is the channel that you use for drum tracks. Step three, let's set up and enable the metronome. So if we right click on the metronome button, make sure that you do, do count in before recording so that you can hear the speed of the beats. And you won't want it running while you're playing back because it'll just distract you. So let's uncheck that box. Now that we've set it up, click the button to make sure that it is enabled. Step four, let's insert a, an instrument on a track. So if we go insert virtual instrument on new track, what we're going to use is we're going to use, and this just comes built into Reaper in the instruments section, the Catewalk TTS-1, which is a standard set of MIDI sounds. And if we use channel 10, you'll see if we just click here, that channel 10 has a GM2 drum set. This is a, a very standard drum set and will help you get going. Step four, check that your track is armed for recording. Usually when you just insert a new track, it automatically comes up armed for recording. Now right click on this button here and check that you, that you have got record MIDI overdub. The reason you want to do this is because as you're looping the track round, you want to add MIDI events to it. You don't want to be wiping out drum beats that you've already recorded. You want to sort of build up layers of drums one on top of the other. Let's just check that the MIDI keyboard is working. So if I just click on any of the notes here, I can hear the drum beats. If I use my keyboard on my computer and hit M, so I've got my drums all ready to go. Step seven, let's select a four bar section that I want to record into. So I'm going to record four bars at a time just to show you how this works. Step eight, make sure that you go into loop mode. If you look at the transport bar, you need to cl click this button here and it should highlight green and that will loop around a section that you've highlighted. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click record and then I'm just going to click the keyboard to make sure that it comes into focus so that I can start pressing M on my keyboard and record a kick drum. Okay, so now I've got a few events. If I double click here, what the step 10 is opening up the piano roll view. Now it's just a few bits of setting up I need to do here. I'm going to scroll in a bit so we can see the section a bit bigger. Because I've already been programming some drums, I'm seeing my notes as diamonds. If you don't see diamonds, you're seeing little rectangles, you might want to go here and view the piano roll notes and make sure that diamonds is selected. Now if we click anywhere here, you'll hear that you're not sat hearing drum sounds, you're hearing a piano sound. So what we need to do is filter so that we only hear drum sounds. So if I click the MIDI filter button here and check channel 10 like that, all the notes that I draw from now on will only go out on channel 10 and so I'll only hear the drum kit. The next thing I want to do is I want to customise these note names here. These numbers are not very intuitive, so although I can hear that they're drums, I'm not exactly sure which ones are which. Now in Reaper and in most doors, it's possible to customise the names of the notes, which will make it much easier when it comes to doing more fine tuning of the programming. 
all I need is a little text file with a drum map. Now, if you go over to my site, you'll be able to download the general MIDI 2 drum map. I've already prepared that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose File, Customize Note Names, Load Note Names from File, and import the GM2 drum map. And now this is looking much better because what I'm seeing is names of drums. So we've got Crash Cymbal, Cowbell, Mid Tom, Open Hi-Hat, all the drum names la labelled. And we've also got the note numbers, which is very handy if you're trying to map them to the notes on the keyboard. So you see here, note number 35 on M is a kick drum. The next thing to do is to line these beats up because although they're not too bad, they're obviously, obviously you want your drum pattern exactly in time. So what you do is click anywhere in the grid, right click, drag, and you can select all the events that you're interested in. And then if you hit the quantize button, okay, you should see that they all shift to be exactly lined up with the beats on the bar just have to click OK to accept what it just did. Now let's have a listen. So what we've got now is we've got a kick drum on every beat. It's a classic four on the floor beat. I'd like to actually move the second and the fourth beat on each bar up to the snare drum instead to get a, a different sounding pattern. So what I'm going to do is if I click that one there and then hold my control down and click every other diamond so that I've selected them what I can do now is move them up onto the snare drum okay let's listen to what we've got now and we've almost got our first simple drum track in place just to show you how to overdub more drum patterns into this I'm going to add a hand clap on the end of each fourth beat, if you see what I mean. Okay, so I can either do that by drawing it in directly here by double clicking. Where's my hand clap there? Okay, let's delete that. Or well, the other thing to do is to see which note it maps to, note number 39. So that's the three on my keyboard. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the loop playing on record and recording, and I'm going to try and beat it in at the right time. So let's go to the beginning by clicking this button here, and let's start recording. One, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four. Not quite on the beat, never mind. As you've seen before, we can just highlight those notes. Okay, so those are the notes I'm interested in. Press the quantize button. I don't want to quantize all the notes, just the ones that I've selected. Okay, and you can see that it's actually moved them right onto the grid. Okay, let's just play that. That's the beginning. So there you go, a simple drum track that I could now copy, repeat, add extra drums into, add fills and so on. So if you hop over to my site now, you can download a cheat sheet that you can have next to you while you're recording your first drum track and you can also download the GM2 drum map that I promised you. And finally, I really suggest that you take a look at Hit It, the ultimate guide to programming drums. I've only covered a very basic pattern here. You're going to want to build the beat up, put in more drum variations, fills, learn how to humanise your drum tracks and so on. And I really recommend this book. It's a fantastic resource. So follow the link below and thanks for watching. See you next time.